Hello, in this video I want to show you how to use the immunity debugger and, uh, and jump to it to analyze the shell code that I extracted from uh, the Hansit or Maldoc. So here on this machine I have uh, the immu immunity debugger running, uh, process explorer and also command line and they are all three running as uh, elevated uh, administrator. And uh, here in the demo folder I have uh, created a file that contains the 32-bit uh, shell code followed by uh, the encoded payload that is found in the document. So I'm going to use the jump to it utility to uh, execute shell code in a process. So first you give it the file that contains the shell code, this file here, and this file, eh, uh, remem remember, not only the shell code, but it also contains the payload. I needed to give the address where it needs to start, 1f9 hexadecimal, and then when I launch it, I don't want to, to run immediately the shell code, I want it to pause so that I can attach a debugger and a single step through it to do a, a dynamic analysis. So let's start this. Okay, and as you can see here, jump to it was launched and here it is waiting so i can now go to the immunity debugger and attach to the process let me find it ah, here it is jump to it so attach and now I run and I pause. And now when you pause, you pause in an endless loop, a jump short onto itself. This is the endless loop that is uh, executed because of the pause argument that we uh, gave it to it, the command line. And here in next instruction, call EDI, there the shellcode will be executed. So I'm going to change the origin here. And now we are going to single step through it, like this. And now we are single stepping through the shell code. Now I'm not going to uh, single step through all the shell code uh, because here in the beginning it sets up uh, the environment and looks up all the uh, libraries and functions that it needs from the API. So I'm not going to show you that, but I'm going to show you some other uh, interesting parts and I have some breakpoints for that. So let me set those breakpoints. So this is the first breakpoint and now we will run to that first breakpoint here. Okay, and now here you have a call to the function, the kernel32 uh, function, expand environment string. And the string that needs to be expanded is uh, 10%, so the temp env uh, environment variable, which uh, represents a temporary folder, and then 12345.exe. So let's run this. And this will uh, look up the value and create a full path to that 12345.exe in the temporary folder. Now I'm showing you this because this is present in the shellcode but this value is later on never used in the shellcode. So it's maybe something that remains from another version, but this here is uh, not used in this shellcode after this calculation. Now the next breakpoint, breakpoint. Here, and let's run. Okay, so the Word document eh, has the embedded payload, which is an exe file, which is encoded and embedded into the Word document. And the shell code has to find that embedded payload and it will do a egg hunt for this. And this is here, this uh, set of uh, assembly instructions that will do this egg hunt. Here you have a call to isbat read pointer eh, to locate memory segments that can be read and here and here 
it will actually look for the shell code uh, by no not for the shell code for the uh, egg hunt for the payload doing an egg hunt and the egg hunt here the keys that it has to find is um, starfall so this here those uh, hexadecimal characters here they represent the string starfall so i'm going to set also breakpoints on this a breakpoint here and a breakpoint here. And now I'm going to start to run. Okay, I'm going to remove this breakpoint uh, because we know it is looping through the different uh, memory uh, segments to find uh, readable memory. Okay, we are past here now. And I can show you here if I do a follow dump here no sorry one more let's run again here here you can see star and fall those are the instructions the operands to the instructions so this is looking for a string star fall in memory so let's remove this first breakpoint now this one here okay and let's run this running okay nice post okay so it found somewhere in memory star and now it is checking if it finds fall so let's work through this and the jump is uh, not taken so it didn't actually find fall so let's continue to run and here now second time let's go look into the memory okay here you can see star fall then a couple of bytes and then you can see here uh, characters. This is actually the embedded payload which uh, has been found by the shell code. Okay, so it has found the payload and now it will uh, copy the, it will allocate memory and it will copy that payload to uh, the memory so that it can be uh, decoded. So let me go to the next uh, breakpoint. So this one here. Okay, and let's start again. Okay, and now here, so the payload has been copied into memory so that it can be decoded. And that is what is going to happen here in this loop. So let's single step. Okay, here let's follow this in the dump okay and here we have the payload and you will see when i single step through it that these uh, characters here will be decoded so first a value 3 is added and then xor with f is made so and this character has now changed and this is done for every character in the payload uh, you can here see slowly the text that is changing and this is done in a loop and we can run till here so let me set the breakpoint this will do the complete decoding okay so it has now been decoded and this is actually base 64 and this function here that will be called will do the base64 decoding. So here you have base64. Let's execute this function. And now you have the decoded payload. And you can see here it starts with MZ. And here you can see this program cannot be run from DOS. So this is actually 
an executable, a PE file. So that's, that's the last breakpoint. Because now we have the decoded payload into memory. So what will happen next is a process replacement by the shellcode. So first a test is done to see if we are actually in a 32-bit process on a 64-bit machine. But this is not the case here. So in that case we are going to launch explorer.exe. So an expand environment string for explorer.exe. And then the next thing that happens here is the create process. Uh, to create that explorer.exe process in a suspended state. We can check this here. In Process Explorer we have jumped to it. And then if we step over the system call create process, the Explorer process is created. Here you have it. And it is grayed out. It means that it is suspended. See? Suspended. So Explorer.exe has been started. And next the shellcode will do the process replacement to replace the code of explorer.exe by the payload that has been decoded into memory. So we get the thread context because we need to change the entry point. Then an unma unmap view of section to uh, unmap the code at this address, which is the, uh, the code of Explorer. And next, virtual alloc of memory at uh, that address where we want to write our payload code. And then, write process memory of the PE file header of uh, the decoded payload that is in memory. And then next, the different sections of the PE file. So this is the first call, call to write process memory for the first section. And you can see we loop here. Another call for the second section, looping, a third call for the third section of the PE file, and then the last section, the fourth section here, write it to memory. And the uh, jump is not taken now. So here now, the shell code has replaced the explorer.exe code by the payload. And uh, the payload has been decoded into memory. And next, a set thread context is called to set the new uh, entry point. And then next, a resume thread is called. And this will start the explorer.exe process. So you can see here a few DLLs uh, loaded. But if we do a resume thread like this, the process start to run different uh, DLLs, all necessary, sorry, DLLs here are loaded. And now the payload is uh, running inside the explorer.exe uh, process. And the shellcode here actually just uh, returns, returns, it is finished.